sasa hivi vile tunaona mambo hapa itakuwa vile tulikuwa nataka tena mimi nataka sasa unichukue nafasi hii nitoe shukrani kwenu nyinyi wakisi tuliposema mjitokeze mjitokeze ati wanafanya nyoko nyoko mnitoka kwa wengi sana si mtoka kwa wengi eh na tukisema hata sasa mrudie si mtamko tayari si mko tayari ungepoko tayari nione mkono hapa sasa wakati huu tunajitayarisha na wakati itakuja so wakati itakuja wakati itakuja ambapo sisi tutasema wakati huu walikuwa wanaongea wameongea sasa sisi kesho tutakuwa na kikao tutasoma yale ile ripoti alafu tutatoa taarifa kamili kama ni mbaya ni nini mbaya eh sawa sawa tutaangalia vile itakuwa alafu tutaelirifu nyinyi hii ni sawa hii ni sawa hii ni mbaya hii ni mbaya sawa sawa kama nataka yenye msubiri mtapata habari kamili morning lightcast tv this is ninja collect and i am martin on to the dailies done yeah on the nation uh, there on the nation they are saying blocked on the nation they are saying uh, blocked setback setback uh, the courts have uh, this week uh, dealt uh, uh, president Ruth william ruto heavy blows in uh, by appending a three key pillars of his Kenya Kwanza administration housing health and privatization judges yesterday declared the housing levy unconstitutional uh, but gave the state until January uh, 10th to appeal the decision on Monday the high court uh, suspended three new uh, health laws as well as uh, the planned sale of uh, Mombasa and Lamu ports and then uh, down there we have Varela Hinson a uh, return of protests uh, that, that story is on page uh, 6 of uh, the Daily Nation and then we have KNTC boss face detectives over edible oil scandal uh, you can uh, grab uh, your copy of the Daily Nation and uh, uh, watch the details on that and then we have uh, up there MPs accused insurer of uh, giving teachers road deal uh, lawmakers threatened to cancel 53 billion shillings plan. Uh, that one is on the, on the back of uh, the Daily Nation. And then we have 120 killed as 89,000 are dis displaced by floods in Garissa, Wajir, Mandera, Tana River uh, with the worst heat. So that's all, that one is on page 11 or page 12, sorry. And then we have unholy Catholic, Catholics shocked by attempted theft of. Uh, of Sister Nyada role is, uh, yeah, that's uh, on the animation. And then on uh, the standard, uh, we have uh, workers' tax jubilation. High Court said uh, the 2.75% are uh, being deducted as house levy, housing levies and constitution, a move that uh, brought relief to many employees, but despite uh, but respite was short-lived after the judges suspended the decision. Yeah, and then we have, uh, down there we have uh, intrigues behind Kenya trade boss, arrest over oil deal. Okay, and then we have Raila Kalonzo take on Ruto's over sale of CETA assets. Yeah, we had uh, those views by President, uh, by Raila Odinga and uh, Kalonzo Musioka. Okay, on the star, on the star, we have uh, unconstitutional quashing of levy brought temporary, temporary re relief to salaried workers. House tax illegal, but pay for now, uh, judges say. Uh, provisions which le the levy was anchored were found to have, to have no legal basis. Yeah, and then down there, we have celebrating lives uh, saved Kenyans. Ce celebrating lives saved as Kenya. Uh, U.S. marked 20 years of AIDS relief. Yeah. Okay, I think that's the main story on uh, the, stand, the, the star. If you want to uh, read more on what happened yesterday or 
yeah you can grab your copy of your favorite newspaper and then we have people's daily uh saying uh Rose, uh Ruto housing tax broke law court says and then down, down there we have uh levy and constitutional judges fault finance act for introducing affordable homes uh fund without legal backing in landmark ruling state asks for time to challenge uh, judgment in court of uh, of appeal and then court says ruling will take effect after 45 days on the side there we have the ca grill stop official over edible oil scandal uh, national trading corporation ceo senior managers grilled in probe of uh, 9 billion import and then down, down there we have why slow growth is bad for kenyans yeah that's uh, i think main stories on the people's daily and then we have uh, up there we have toll death toll uh from floods raises to 87 billion and then deputy on page seven deputy president uh, says 37 of the victims acted <laughs> recklessly by crossing raging rivers as uh, security ps announces uh, setting up of command center to coordinate response to a nino uh, crisis so i think th those are the main stories on the on the newspapers i think most of them are just uh, focusing on uh, the high court ruling on issues to do with the uh, uh, housing levy also uh, if uh, yesterday we did we did uh, a video on that uh, you can still you can do like a, a small uh, commentary on that what do you think well um just to do a recap on the ruto housing tax proc law mm -hmm. on what the people daily is saying is that uh, the high court yesterday declared some sections of the finance act 2023 and constitution including the house levy mm -hmm. Uh, we had a three-judge bench uh, which ordered the government to cease collection of housing levy holding it contravenes the constitution um, and then it actually it was Busia Senator Okiom Tata, the Law Society of Kenya and others who had moved to court challenging the Finance Act saying that it was unconstitutional mm -hmm. yet um, that was a quick win for the salaried workers. True. Yeah, because we see that the salaried workers now, they're 2.75% that they're repatriated to the government. Mm -hmm. Now, it it's possibly that they can get it back, but we find that the government lawyers also asked for some time, 45-day conservatory order to, to be able to be given time to, to you know, repatriate that money in an efficient manner but also i would like to add something i said yesterday on my analysis about this issue on housing levy that i was waiting to hear what president ruto had to say on the issue and he actually spoke about it he revealed that the government is planning to make readjustments to its policies after the High Court declared certain provisions of the Finance Act, including the Housing Levy and Constitution. And he spoke this during um, the Fifth Congress of the International Trade Union Confederation, Africa, which was held in Nairobi. And he stated that the government would respect the court's ruling, but maintained the housing program is important for the country's long-term aspirations including job creation remember he's been talking about this housing levy creating job creation especially for the young people mm -hmm. talking about ajira kwavijana and he also made a very crucial statement of which um i quote verbatim he made a very very crucial statement he said that he, he actually refuted the claims that the housing project was mainly aimed at benefiting the government and not Kenyans as a whole. And he reported that in the last eight months that uh, this project, this housing plan, had given 120,000 jobs or had created 120,000 jobs to the young people. And so... I am glad that he actually res he had decided to respect the court ruling, uh -huh. and so um, I think it's it's going to be interesting to see how this issue on the housing levy unfolds when the 45-day conservatory 
conservatory order expires we still understand that the dp gashagwa has asked the judges the three bench panel the three judge panel to exercise their judicial discretion to be able to ensure that this housing levy on the finance act is not actually repealed but uh as we all know, the salaried workers actually were crying out loud out there and they were thinking that, oh, this government is going to tax us to our knees. But then again, I think uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is very, very keen on ensuring that they make readjustments. I think that is where they're going to work on mm -hmm. so as to, you know, make ways in which this housing levy act can actually work for the Kenyan people and we also understand that the the lawyers who are alluded to the Kenya Kwanzaa government are working on an appeal to appeal against the ruling that has been set by the three judge panel don't uh you have said that that is good that like uh president Ruto has chose to maybe to respect uh, the rule uh to respect the, the ruling of the court. You see, there is a difference uh, between uh, talking and now doing, uh, how can I say it? Now, maybe putting that, that talk into practice or uh, into doing. I think President Ruto first should explain to Kenya and see if he respected uh, maybe the court ruling on the issue of uh, the CSS. So far, there, have, there has not been formal like formal communication from the government uh, telling people that, uh, they, look, the CS, we, we appointed this and the court ruled this way. So we have officially sucked or uh, we, have, we have officially done away with the, the 50 CSs that we appointed. And uh, maybe there's the money that were, the money that were allocated uh, for, uh, for their salaries and uh, these things have been allocated for other uh, staff in the government. There has not be formal, uh, uh, formal communication from the government. Uh, though uh, some, I think some few days uh, we saw the government spokesman, as, uh, Isaac Moura, say uh, that uh, the CAS is, uh, uh, the CSS position stand uh, still stand to be unconstitutional. But yeah, we see uh, this. Uh, first of all, uh, people don't trust uh, Ruto's government. So I think there should be that formal communication. Then there should be someone maybe doing the follow-up to make sure that the the CSS are not working. Because right now, after this ruling that uh, the ruling was made, I think everything went silent. So communication from uh, maybe uh, a formal communication from maybe Watukaki na Jagua, Mr. Tomanga, those people that were working as the CSS in the Rutas government, were under silent. So it's. Ngumu kujua kama they are still CSS ama I think for Kenyans to trust uh, Ruto more uh, with this now this ruling of housing levy he should come out and tell Kenyans uh, like uh, look uh, the way I respected uh, the court on this issue of CASS I, have, I will do it uh, in this uh, thing of house levy and he should provide proof that uh, the CSS are not in the offices yeah I think that's a good point. Um, it's true that there has not been any formal communication on the issue of the CSS and their ruling mm -hmm. that the CSS uh, choice of being um, uh, appointed mm -hmm. in the in the in the government is un is unconstitutional as was declared mm -hmm. by the court then. I think that is a very crucial issue that needs to be handled. I think that the uh, Kenyans out there need to ask these tough questions and they need to hold this government to account. They need to ask tough questions because you remember during this, uh, uh, back then, uh, when this year was just uh, unfolding, we had the Kenya's biggest conversation, which was the Finance Act Bill. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So the Finance Act Bill was rolled out, and people discussed vehemently on the issues, mm -hmm. and yet uh, people were poking holes on the document. Mm -hmm. It was 
being poked in the media, the holes of the document were poked, even in parliament, the opposition, uh, people on the, on, the, on the ground, the corporates, the people who are in the manufacturing sector also poked holes on the document and they made some recommendations which was necessary to ensure that Kenyans are actually accommodated when it comes to the finance bill. Yeah. And also we remember the issue on the on the artists, I mean the young people who are now doing content creation, especially on social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, they made a lot of noise. I remember Eric Omondi making a lot of noise because he vehemently said that President Ruto had nothing to do with creating a... Uh, um, an opportunity for the young people in matters to do with content creation and so he had no right to tax these young people who were actually going out to look for content using their phones using their cameras some of them have borrowed these um, materials and they need to repatriate their profits as a result of bringing in this content and so there were many recommendations made on various fronts including um, the manufacturing sector, uh, many manufacturers complained. Um, we also saw on the issue of, of uh, the ladies who liked to wear um, human hair like myself. And we also saw that there are so many ladies out there who are suffering from cancer. It's not that they liked to wear this human hair, but as a result of their disease. And so if the uh, finance bill was not uh, had had not gone through a, a reforms that it did then i i don't think the kenyans would would have had it uh, easy uh, ensuring that this uh, finance act goes through but then nevertheless as much as the reforms were made on all fronts um the the, the 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 parliament passed through the, the the finance bill because you know the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs had the numbers and we find that those who had um had had halted the finance bill that the judges they were shifted to various parts of the country and it is very unfortunate the the judges who found the CAS appointment by the president and constitutional were shipped to other parts outside Nairobi. So I saw that and I failed to understand why is the government acting like this. I thought that the executive arm of the government, the legislature and the judiciary arm of the government should act as stand alone because the legislature is supposed to make laws. The executive they are they actually implement um the 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 the, the laws the president signs the bills into laws and makes sure that the policies are actually implemented in the country yeah. and the judiciary they are the ones who interpret the law so it actually beats me on how the, the president is going to handle this issue because there's there's so much um here say there is so much uh talk from this government but just uh, there is too much there is too much pr i may say what i understand about president ruto he is very good on quoting the numbers yesterday he said that this housing program had created 120,000 jobs and I think that needs to be substantiated very, very quickly. And the people need to see actually that this housing levy is working for the good of the people. And so about your issue about the CSS is not being clear from the government, I think that um people who are watching this government closely need to ask these hard questions mm -hmm. and from my side i don't think they are working but i think this is something that needs to be looked into and to ensure that this government is 
following the rule of law and abiding by the constitution in matters to do with the laws that they are um are are bringing on on board for the kenyan people yeah so i think that that uh I think that that's the work of opposition as per now, and then PI even one inch here have the power to maybe insist for the government to uh, come out clear on that issue, and I think uh, they should come out. They should just, Unajua, they should not just uh, take things on like a kabati. It's like people are misahau. They pile up uh, things that are, are unclear to the people. So I think uh, even. Uh, we should th this uh, thing of housing levy is, it should not be uh, swept under the, under the carpet. They should uh, exactly. They, 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 after uh, after the ruling, uh, we see we have uh, that we have that period of forty five days uh, that maybe they should. Uh, is it uh, time, uh, is it the time to refund or what or to do what? They are supposed to. Okay, according to this conservatory order, these forty five days actually those who are still paying this uh 2.75% they are actually going to continue to pay for those 45 <laughs> days but on the January of 10th yeah. that is when they'll stop and then the government okay. will have to work out a plan on how they're going to be refunded and uh are we sure <laughs> that the, the government will uh, just will uh, <laughs> that remains to be seen. We, we refund the people like uh, just say, hey, Papa, Papa, you, re you have received 45k from uh, President Ruto's government. Will that be possible? <laughs> that one remains to be seen. But uh, then, if they do not follow the court rulings, then uh -huh. the co the concerned stakeholders will still go back to court mm -hmm. and hold the court, the government in contempt mm -hmm. because they have contravened the the court ruling. Okay, so yeah. I I think uh, it, uh, they 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 say that it's easier say uh, say than than done. So we're waiting for that. Those yeah. for, those forty forty five days will expire, and we'll see what will, will proceed after that. Mm -hmm. So it's only this January tenth. Si yeah. mbali, masiku zitapita tu. So to say to say ma wa tuonye sa easy wana ubuko kilipa housing levy. Same next uh, year. So 45 uh, ni January sindio. Si January tarehe 10 ndio ina expire. Hizo 45 so, days. They are, they are, they, it's like they were saving in the, in some in some way. So at least January on expect uh, nini kuwa soft and kiasi ile nje ya January at least wataokoka from root of government. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think we should shift gears to now uh, issues uh, to do with the bipartisan talks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen Raila yesterday come out and uh, uh I say that uh hinted on uh, the return of mandamanos so uh and uh, then uh, yesterday we saw they were on the same platform with uh, kalonzo musioka and kalonzo musioka said that uh, they he will represent him with the the with the bipartisan uh on uh, the bipartisan talks uh, reports so uh it makes me wonder, like, uh, how comes Raila can make such, can hint on uh, the, return, the return of Mandamanos, and then these uh, talks were, were like, uh, was uh, created maybe to uh, do with Mandamana trying to solve the, the issues uh, that uh, the Azimio had, uh, like, off the street. And then Raila makes uh, that uh, issue, or Raila makes that uh, hint. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, Raila makes that uh, request and uh, uh, hints on the return of Manda Manos, yet he has not received the full report of, of the bipartisan talks. What do you think about that? Um, well, the bipartisan talks, uh, the report has been done, yeah? Yeah, and yeah, so, so I think uh, the issue here is just uh, the presentation now. Yeah, uh, so uh, we heard from the former Prime Minister Raila Molo Dinga saying that they're going to have a sit down with the mm -hmm. members of Azimio mm -hmm. to look at the report to poke holes and see whether the issues that they had put on the table had been addressed. Mm -hmm. 
Um, according to what I've understood from the bipartisan talk, the issue that affects the common monanchi, number one, mm -hmm. and also which affects us as well, the cost of living has not been tackled. Mm -hmm. According to various media, we've seen that the Kenya Kwanzaa counterparts, the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition and the uh, Azimio La Umoja coalition failed to come to terms on agreement in matters to do with the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem for me. Because that is something that they had to deal with first. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with them being uh, politicians on various sides of the political divide. This was an issue that dealt with the Kenyans directly. Mm -hmm. This is the state of the nation. The state of the nation is the state of the people. That is Edwin Sifuna's statement. And I feel very strongly that if this issue of the cost of living is not handled properly then i think then what is the point of having these talks mm -hmm. and then there are issues about electoral process so i think a panel of experts were were, were to be appointed to evaluate the 2022 electoral process mm -hmm. and th i think that the the Azimio La Umoja coalition also recommended the reconstitution of the IEBC selection panel mm -hmm. from seven to nine members. Mm -hmm. And we also saw various reforms, that legal reforms uh, that had been passed before uh, general elections that had been passed 18 months before the general elections become effective in in the next elections and we find that this bipartisan talks has taken a longer period a four month uh, period and still we find that uh, the, the Jubilee Secretary General Kioni was very keen on ensuring that the both sides of the political divide come to an agreement in the issue of the cost of living and that issue has not been handled i think that is a huge that is a that is a huge let down for the kenyan people because that is the first thing if i remember also one of the uda mps called wamuchomba a lady she made a declaration in one of the in one of her rallies that if the issue of the cost of living is not addressed, Edwin Sifuna said the same. Kama beyaunga haita shuka, sijuni nini tunaungea. We will shut down that report. Martha Karua, Eugene Wamalwa, all various Zimio principles told Kalonzo Musioka, if you do not handle the issue of the cost of living, then why are you guys sitting down? Actually, this is an issue that is affecting every Kenyan. And to add salt into injury, we have El Nino rains. And people are grappling with the issue of how they can come from where they are at with their houses being filled up with water. To moving to a safer ground that means that their houses have been de devastated by these floods and now talk about them starting from ground zero and the cost of living has not been handled it has not been given headway by these two uh bipartisan uh groups well, the azimio and the kenya kwanza i think it it is it is it is sad i think for me it is very sad and about the issue of um the former prime minister raila molo dinga hinting at mandamanos i think that is not a good idea because currently we have so many challenges that kenyans are grappling with um we have el nino rains there are some parts of this country, even if you try to go for mandamanos, that will be a death trap for, for many. Yeah, they will be swept. Yeah, they'll be swept away by floods. And <laughs> even if they try, the, the Kenya Kwanza government will be on their toes to ensure that the, that people who participate will not have it easy. Mm -hmm. So I, 
so far we have over 120 people who have lost their lives in the El Nino rains. Now you add mandamanos into all these uh, catastrophes and problems that the Ken Kenyan government is grappling with. So many lives will be lost because I know the the police, the CS of Interior will not will not be will not have it easy with those who are going for mandamanos, and so I think that there, there needs to be another plan. There needs to be another plan in which the government can actually ensure that. I mean, the opposition actually needs to ensure that the government is held to account and to ensure that they listen to the Kenyans and do what they said they would do in matters to do with them being elected. They said that they are going to ensure the cost of living comes down, but still we have so many issues that the Kenyans are grappling with and still this issue has not been handled, yet the two groups were talking. So it 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 makes no sense mm -hmm. that this report should even go through mm -hmm. without handling the issue that the Kenyans are actually crying about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the question to ask here, what if now that Mandawano comes from the people themselves, but now... Now that is a totally them. different ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. I totally suggest, I ask, I ask the political, the political class, from the Azimio coalition, please do not push the the Kenyans to Mandamano. Let the common Mwananchi come out by himself or herself mm -hmm. and agitate for their rights mm -hmm. from the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Let them hold this country to account. If it is for the Kenyan Mwanan the common Mwananchi to to bring an economic standstill, let it be so, but let it not come from the political class. Mm -hmm. Because the Kenya Kwanzaa government will, will, will start attacking the political class. Mm -hmm. And we need to see this thing happening from the ground. People are crying. People are dying. I mean, to Nayenda December, and people are asking, Sasei December, Itakua Aji. How is it going to be? Yeah. Don? So uh, yesterday we, we saw Gashago say that uh, I he was like uh, trying to shift blame now to the victims of uh, the of uh, the Mafuriko. They saying that um, some of them are going to be like a situation here. away. Is it? Uh, can you really say that uh, they were they were going to be like because? Uh, if uh, on the day to day activities, unajua sasa mimi unaweza kaa hapo mtu amekutia kazi mahali and uh, maybe you have left, left the, the family back at home uh, like they wanakutegemea they depend on you and uh, on everything like bila au bila wewe kutoka ama wewe bila hiyo kazi hautapata food unajua and you maybe you are trying your luck maybe ukisema ukivuka hapa tena ni ni shughuliki hiyo job nirudi nipate niende nipate uh, kinini na nipate pesa nirudi nishughulikie familia yangu so is it correct for the dp now to shift blame on the on the sakam people so unajua i think this government should just take responsibility because i think they were they ignored uh, the the issues to do with the rains as much as uh, president ruto saying the says that uh, they were praying for rain back then at nyayo stadium uh, so why, why are you praying for something that you are not sure of? And then after that, so that, that thing has happened, Nobuda Nambia what like uh uh what when you go for or come to like a situation. I think this uh -huh. government is just uh, <laughs> I think uh Pia I think the peace history of uh maybe of being a D or a DC in a more be a sana because they are but yeah, there's something that uh, maybe people don't expect from a deputy president. People expect a deputy president to be, never, to you really carry yourself as a deputy president. There's that executive now, that ex executive look, executive talk, and executive everything that um, you should be having. Because maybe you can say that a uh, situation plan, you, you never know. 
you are a deputy president maybe you have everything according to you maybe that we make your life smooth kenyans are suffering uh, does it mean that now during the nino rains they should just stay at home uh, like uh, so watch to kai to unajua at that instant unajua at that moment uh, they don't the children if you are a man the children don't have anything to eat at home in at uh, home so they are depending on you as a man or they are depending on you as their uh, their father to to do something so as a man on some a man can try so a man tries <laughs> so a man tries to book that uh, in that plus i ended up at least kakito kuja sort family and then the tra- tragedy may happen and then the pee anasema hapo and then at the same time the deputy president and anasema he still says that uh, uh, he disbursed they disbursed money for el nino rains but that report turned to be wrong the governor says to say that uh, that the dp is uh, not tra- saying the truth so uh, after all uh, we can say even if uh, maybe uh, the government was well planned or am um, well ready for these uh, you nino know, rains they should have come with maybe the plans you see it's, uh, it's better to be ready for something even if it uh, doesn't happen at least you are ready for that, for that deal so that uh, in case it may happen agents part of god because you can't be ready when something has just started that will be too late i think uh, the government ignored to, uh, they ignored or uh, they took a back seat and say that ah it got to for kawaida it kuja nyeshe but it turned out to be the nino that uh, president uh, ruto uh, refuted so th- that brings to uh, cause i think during that issue i mean there were uh, issues to do you remember sakaja with his uh, stories of uh, uh, atakuwa na issue uh, boats to <laughs> to Kenya to Nairobi residents that uh, kama kwa when you go flooded you can use uh, boats as a means ya kupeleka maybe job uh, as a means to maneuver through the city while well, the boats boat or uh, if for that uh, cash was already allocated for those boats where did the cash go yeah, I, I think there are just a, a, a lot of a lot of misses uh, in the in this Ruto's government I, I think according to me i don't i, I don't know if I, me uh, according to me i think uh, even a primary school cannot be run the way uh <laughs> Ruto is running this, this uh, the country because uh, uh, of course people know that uh, uh the cost of living is high even in the uh, in the foreign nations but uh, the strategies maybe is making a uh, totally uh, miss akisema hiki kitu just a miss akisema hiki kitu ni miss akisema hiki kitu ni miss i think uh, it's high time that uh, president ruto should come out clear and uh, maybe uh, the me according to me <laughs> the opposition yesterday they were saying that kama uh, if uh, ruto amelemo kuran the government he should just come out and uh, maybe achie mtu mwingine mwenye nzarani i don't i'm not saying that achie raila but i don't know if we stay uh, so right now we don't know if uh, maybe if Raila was uh, pre- the president the same situation will be happening we, that one we don't know because uh, the issues to do with the uh, ninos and uh, uh, are uh, natural occurrences because even if Raila was president uh, it is real need to happen so what the government should do is not actually uh, uh, like uh, preventing it to happen you can't as a man you can't uh, we can't pre- prevent uh, the natural natural disasters or the, or the happening of God to to happen what you should do as a government is just to help uh, your people so th- to it uh, first of for, first of all to save them physically from the from the disasters that are caused by the natural uh, occurrences like a nino now i think they should just come out and they should have just come out and uh, Give, uh, given the strategies that uh, they uh, the the issues that they they have put in place so that they be able to curb that uh, uh, the effects of uh, El Nino uh, rather than giving excuses. So I think uh, the uh, the government has failed. On my side, they should Agashago should just stop uh, maybe talking and maybe if. Uh, <laughs> it should maybe depend more on the advisory team if if, if, if kama konayo because sometimes maybe if you give this mind in a, in a kitu. so uh 
Sema kwa mfano kuna a family out there. Uh, kuna mtu amepoteza sister yake there support na kwa mpoteza mtoto wake mdogo. Kuna mtu amepoteza babake. Una, unajua. And then he, he or she hears what the deputy says about the dead those people that are dead due to elino rains. What will what, what do you think that uh, the person will be thinking? So I think before the deputy president uh, come, uh, comes out and say something, <laughs> we should just uh, be reasonable and uh, be considerable before he utters any statement. Yeah. You know, so many people have been saying that we have a DP who speaks the truth even if it hurts. Mm -hmm. But then again, I think when you speak something to the public, you need to exercise a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that is actually lacking in this government mm -hmm. because we have this government officials coming out saying things mm -hmm. that is not really good for the people to hear. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to listen to Deputy President mm -hmm. speak the way he spoke, especially in matters issues to do with El Nino Reigns yeah. and the people who lost their lives. Remember, according to news yesterday, uh, about one, about eighty, is it eighty-four thousand homes mm -hmm. were invaded by these floods, and over one hundred and twenty people lost their lives all over their country. Or one person dying is one too many. Mm -hmm. And now we have more than 120 people. Most, like you've just said, so many people have lost their family members, brothers and sisters, fathers, mm -hmm. mothers, probably have lost their husbands who are the breadwinners of the family. And then the deputy president comes out to attack the very people that he said he would help. I think that was very careless. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said, Deputy President, I respect him as the leader, as the Deputy President, but then again, he needs to work on his talk, on his rhetoric, mm -hmm. even if he is giving direction to the Kenyan, Monanchi, to the common people. He needs to exercise a lot of restraint because I feel very strongly that the utterances that he made yesterday were very, very, very careless. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, people have lost their lives. And you see, probably the person who was crossing over from one side to the other, trying to reach to his house, probably, kuna watu waliacha watoto kwa hizo manyumba. And probably he was trying his level best to go and save the little that he had or save somebody in that house. Mm -hmm. What if, Sasa, you have left your kids in that house, you had got somewhere to hustle, then you heard that your home was invaded by floods. What were you supposed to do? Were you supposed to wait for the government to come and yet you, you, could, you, 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 you had your kids, your family there? You had to do something. And so I think uh, from... From what the deputy president said, I think that was very careless. Mm -hmm. I think that the the communication uh, committee that is uh, surrounding president, I mean deputy president, uh, regarding Gashago, need to do a lot of work on him. I don't know whether he is the one who is being uh, difficult, mm -hmm. but then again, those statements were very, very, very tough, and they were not there were not the right statements to say. He should have offered condolences, as actually, for those people who have lost their lives, and he should have made a statement on what currently the government is doing. You see, the, the uh, President Ruto had formed a national steering committee. He had called on the CSS, he had called on the Council of Governors, the stakeholders, the Red Cross, all the people who are involved in ensuring that this El Nino rains is contained in a manner that people can actually move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. He had offered that press briefing and also we saw the head of communication who was a former citizen journalist making that communication to the public. So I think that the government needs to come out strongly on telling us what are the what are those things that they're doing mm -hmm. to ensure that the people who who are who are affected in those flooded areas how are they what what measures are they taking to save 
those who actually are in the flooded areas kuna watu ambao wamekwama kwa manyumba they cannot move from where they are yet maji water has 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 filled up to their waist they cannot swim what is the government doing about that what are the measures that they are taking to save the people from not dying we don't want to hear any more reports of people dying from various parts of the country we want to see this national steering committee actually working and also i think it will be important for also the red cross to come out and give us numbers on the numbers of the people that have been saved from the from places or counties where these uh, flash floods have happened uh, this el nino rains and i think also DP should apologize to the Kenyan people. He should not be talking the way he's talking. I think that was a very careless talk. I don't know what the PR committee are doing around him, but I think that he needs to, you know, re-strategize on how he talks in matters, especially issues, disaster, issues, catastrophes. Uh, I think the government needs to, you know, go back to the drawing board and see how they can help the people who are actually in the floody zones and and as i i have seen someone from the kenya kwanza government doing a lot of good that is the former journalist muhammad dali is actually helping out the people who are in camps in coast and he's 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 distributing food he's distributing clothing is distributing the necessities that they are required for their use for those who have have escaped flooding areas yeah yeah so i think uh, uh, but still if, even if he is doing that it's just politicizing the matter because uh you remember that statement by the dp that uh, he has dispersed our uh, that uh, the, the counties should focus on uh El nino uh and leave other uh, development project he said that statement during his meeting with uh with the nyali mp that is muhammad ali so i think uh on the same issue of uh, bipartisan talks, uh, we saw. Do you uh, uh, do you think uh, the the Azimio Brigade will remain as one? Because uh, right now it has been. It's like uh, all the there there is a, a division uh, among them, especially if, uh, the politicians from Mount Kenya, and that one is uh, Martha Karua and uh, Jeremiah Kioni and maybe the jubilee faction are maybe divided on uh, the report uh, by the dialogue national dialogue committee so do you think uh, maybe they remain as one because uh, according to me uh, i sense uh, it's like like kuna right, right now there's uh, just uh, some sort of a division me according to me because uh matakarua kuja na sema hivi jeremiah on yesterday they they uh, wali they uh, Jeremiah Kioni brushed off uh, the report saying that uh, it was not addressing the issues that was facing Kenyans, especially the matter of cost of living. And uh, we saw Okia uh, Mtata say that uh, the, the report on the National, National Dialogue Committee was just focused on matters of leadership, how, they, they, the, how Ruto and Raila will share the top seat, maybe, and he was giving his mind saying that uh, in some way he thinks uh, maybe Raila or uh, Ruto is uh, creating the is advocating for the creation of uh, the position the office of the position leader because he, he will fail in the 2007 elections so that uh, op uh, opposition leader seat will uh, ensure that he stays in government or in parliament uh, for that period so i don't think uh, what i don't know what uh, maybe uh, I, I, I see uh, uh, like division among those people because uh, we are just waiting maybe to see for to to we are waiting for Raila's final decision on this because I think it's the man now to people are looking at because so far uh, Eugene Omalo has appeared uh, has refuted the, uh, he said that he will not sign the final report of the National Dialogue Committee uh, saying that it was not addressing the issues uh, maybe the issues that was uh, to prioritize the, the, the cost of living and uh, to push on the, the Kenyans so far. 
and uh, maybe some of uh, the reports uh, the report maybe was saying that uh, they agreed on creation of uh, the position of a uh, chief cabinet uh, secretary and the issue of uh, position leader and uh, yeah so they were saying that these issues have not happened so, so far as he, as he touch on Kenya anyway and i think Kenyans were just Kenyans were just uh, uh, they said that Raila is the president of the people and uh, Raila was uh, people right now are calm and they're just waiting for what Raila will say I think that's why people just wanaumia lakini wamenyamaza wanaumia na nyamaza na ngalala ila so that was the way ahead so what do you think maybe uh, will happen after these talks after now the Raila has read the uh, the final report and we give his decision the report I think for me yes there are cracks in the Azimio coalition as a result of the uh, bipartisan talks like you've said uh, Martha Karua had her, her thoughts about it, Jeremiah Kioni as well. I think there are cracks that are emerging from this Azimio coalition by uh, Azimio leader uh, Raila Molo Dinga told the, uh, the Kenyans that uh, the Azimio coalition will go and have a sit down mm -hmm. on the report. And so all these differences that are emerging as a result of this bipartisan talks will be brought to the table and they're going to come up with a common position so i think let's wait for the for the for the azimio coalition to come up with their common position because azimio coalition has many parties Karura is in it waipa kalonzo is in it jeremiah kioni jubilee is in it so the, all these leaders will have to meet at some point and there's they're they're going to meet and they're going to voice their their concerns as per this bipartisan report and they all agreed i think most of the azimio coalition partners agreed that if the matter of the cost of living is not addressed then this report is null and void it's going to be trashed so let us wait for this, for the Azimio coalition to come up with a common position, because I remember yesterday Opio and I, and also Azimio leader coalition uh, Raila Molo Dinga saying that we, we are going to, ha they are going to have a sit down, and they are going to come up with a, with a statement as as per that report. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we just uh, have some few. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Okiom Data said yesterday that uh, when Kenyans elected the Ruto, there was uh, no way uh, he said that the IMF and the World Bank would govern uh, Kenya uh, when, he, when he gets into office uh, and he promised to govern this country, but he is des destroying it. Everything is crumbling in one year. It's not acceptable. So I think uh, we'll hear maybe what. Uh, Kia Mutata said about after the ruling yesterday. We we'll listen to his speech and then we'll be we'll we'll be, we'll be winding up uh, the show. Uh, so for those people that are watching us on Facebook, uh, thank you very much for watching us. And uh, if you are watching us and you're not a, a follower, please uh, follow Lightcast TV on Facebook. Follow Lightcast TV on Twitter and also uh, watch our videos or subscribe to our youtube channel uh, for more yeah if uh, in case you have not uh, subscribed to our youtube channel and uh, you can share our videos uh, videos uh, so that we'll be able to reach many people and uh, you can also give your comment on uh, what you think about today's topic and uh, i will appreciate It's a, direct, it's a direct consequence of political policy and it underscores the primacy of uh, political yes. action over market forces. What we are really suffering right now is that the, 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 the political actors right now are not prior, prior, prioritizing or taking action to prioritize the, the questions around the cost of living which are influenced by fuel, the cost of fuel, and the cost of production generally has gone up. So it really needs political action 
but the president has declined to take the political action that is required. And as a consequence of that, the cost of living continues skyrocketing. But as you know, anybody will tell you there are only four things in the world that need that a government needs to address seriously. The first thing is food. You must keep food away from the control of the ordinary fluctuations of uh, of prices on the on world markets, on the open markets. Number two, you must control the cost of health. Number three, you must control the cost of uh, education. Number four, you must control the cost of transport. And if you look at our government, all those sectors, it has done nothing to intervene. So if the government was to intervene and make those sectors no go areas for cartels and they do no gooders and the thieves, this country would not be going through the mess it is going through. Somebody will be very comfortable living on the street and sleeping on the, rough on the street but having food in his stomach and being able to be treated when he's sick. It doesn't require a house over food. It doesn't require shelter over health. It doesn't require shelter over education. And it needs to move around. So our government has literally failed to address the key areas, and there are four. Health, food, health, education, and transport. Those four areas have failed. Those are the four areas that burden the citizen most. So you need a government that can take political action to address those issues and see how it can cushion the ordinary person from the vac the, the, the vagrances of the of, 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 of those commodities or the effects of those commodities on their lives. But when I look at it, I don't see it in uh, President William Bruto, especially now that he has surrendered his mind to the mind of the IMF and the World Bank. IMF and the World Bank have just one purpose, to create client states. And if you look at the policies that have been ra rolled out by the Jubilee, the Kenya Kwanza government, they are largely designed to make Kenya a client state, to put Kenya on its knees, so that you can keep on depending, moving around with a beggar's ball. Production in Kenya has become too expensive. So everything is going to shrink, the economy is going to collapse, and we shall begin begging all over the world. And we shall be a perfect client state for the West. So William Root, I think, is empty. This head is empty in terms of uh, what are the ex existential threats that face the black people, that face Africans. He swallowed the issues of the white man, the way they are packaged. He doesn't understand uh, chronic capitalism, how it works. So he has now become an agent of the West to destroy an African state. And some of the things he does is doing are bordering on prison. They are prisonable and maybe going down the line he might be impeached. If he doesn't change course and begin understanding what Article 1 says, that the people of Kenya are sovereign. And when they elected him, there was no way in his manifesto where he said that the IMF and the World Bank are going to govern Kenya when he gets into office. He promised to govern this country, but he has, he's destroying it. Everything is crumbling in one year. It's not acceptable. So he needs to shape up or, or he might get impeached down the line. I don't think his own peace will die with him. They're going to get a point whereby he can be impeached if he doesn't change course and begin doing things that benefit this country, not, not to benefit the Western powers, not to benefit the World Bank. Right now he wants to sell the assets. These assets, some of them were put up before he was born. Now he wants to come and sell them. What will the future gener generations have as a state? Those who run the government in the future, what will they rely on to run this government? I would to, we have already talked of food. We are talking of transport. We are talking of uh, education. We are talking of health. If these things are sold, how, how will the future governments finance those key ingredients of a modern society? So for me, I think William Ruto is going overboard. And where we are right now, we might be facing an impeachment very soon. Hi, everyone. My name is Elias Njeru, Director Engineers Land and Property. Thank you so much for watching Lightcast TV. Uh, my name is Ninja Kolek. And I am uh, Don Martin Tryon. Uh, please follow us on Facebook. Yeah, continue follow us, following us on Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and other social media platforms and uh, supporting us uh, in whichever way you can. So you can also advertise with us uh, using those numbers, 721 You can WhatsApp us, maybe the details of uh, your services, product, 
yeah so that we can help you reach more clients that you need for your business uh till uh next time goodbye for now yeah my name is martin <laughs>